What's going on, family? I'm Robert Ballot. Whoopsie, I'm Jamila Ballot. And we are The Ballot. Welcome to our pod vlog podcast, uh, another week. Um, today is my wife's birthday. <laughs> Happy oh, birthday sure. to you. Birthday. Happy birthday to you. Well, by the time y'all see this, mm, probably it would have passed mm, a couple mm, weeks wait, ago. But mm, it's mm. her birthday. How you feeling on your birthday, baby? I feel great. I feel great Yeah. most of the time. All right, what's going on, family? Listen, today uh, I wanted to, I, I wanted my wife and I to have this conversation on camera because I think it's really important, and it's something that I don't think um, that is discussed as much as it should be. So I want to talk today about man, manhood and depression, or men in depression. Um, so let me just give you a real, let me give you a real quick synopsis and honey, jump ahead anytime you're ready. Stop me, correct me, because you know my storytelling sometimes is a little off, sometimes. Um, at the end of 2016, towards the end of 2016 and some of 2017, there, um, there was a couple of life-changing things that kind of happened, and and I fell into this, um, I fell into this depression. Um, towards the end of two, 2017, I'm gonna say I made the choice to stop uh, Grace Church. Uh, my wife and I, we had a a ministry for two years um, called called Grace Church. I made deci the decision to stop the ministry. Um, we're talking but we about still have ministry. Oh, yeah, no, I, I, I'm talking so about So we never, we didn't, to stop the Sunday. The, the, yeah, we had service. I, we, had the loca we had a location, so we never mm -hmm. stopped. Um, ministry is just who we are. We're just. And that was part of our ministry. Right. That was, honestly, that was part that was of it. a small it. part of it. Yeah. Actually, but yeah. go ahead. Um. um what else? Oh, and so I was also in the process of changing careers. I had retired from my business in 2014. Um, when my wife, uh, actually I retired uh, two days before my wife and I got, got married. And so I thought in my mind that life was going to transition a lot smoother for me. I don't know why you thought that. Because everything <laughs> in my brain is very, I'm very idealistic. And so I have a lot of, I'm a dreamer. Mm -hmm. And I'm a thinker, and so I really thought the popularity I had in one area would kind of carry over, and it would, and it did it did exactly the opposite. Um, and so that was a transition. And so in me transitioning the career, um, there was this decent job. Uh, the pay was unbelievable. I went through the hiring process, drug tests, um, everything came back great. I was offered the position. Um, I gave my two weeks notice at the at the place um, that I was working at, at the time, and then two days before I was supposed to start, I received the email. So I called in, and they withdrew the offer. I was hurt. I was devastated because this was the hours I was looking for. Everything that I thought was going to make our life better. Um, uh, what else was going on at that time? Um, and I, some, sometimes you pray for something, and it, you know you, you're prayerful too. Yeah. So yeah. Um, you know, in our personal lives, it was okay. This is it. God has opened the door. Yeah. I mean, yo, we were excited because <laughs> you know, for for where, for my transition at that point in, at that point in life, that's just where I was, and so I thought it was going to be I thought it was going to be phenomenal. Um, let me go back to it's, the yeah. It seemed um, I want to jump. I want to. I want to back up real quick too, because I got to put this in here. One of the reasons why I made the decision to stop um, Grace Church at the time was because it started to affect my marriage. I shared with my wife one day. I believe it was from your side, though. Huh? Go ahead. What'd you, what'd you say? Go ahead. I didn't hear what you said. Go ahead, honey. Um, I came home one day. My Pers wife. It, it was a personal thing for you. You felt that, even though. I, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, even yeah, though yeah. I no. didn't. Well, no, I know you didn't. And I think it's important to say that. Okay, good. Because we're couples, you know, listen to yeah, us. Yeah, she didn't feel that way. I felt that way because it was robbing me of who I was under so much pressure and stress, and I was taking it out on her a lot of times. So, you know, we, she made me dinner one night, and I apologized to her. 
You probably, I don't know if you remember this. Um, you made I dinner. Remember. Okay. So <laughs> she made remember. dinner, candles. I was stressed out. Came home one no night. No special occasion. No special We're occasion. We're good at that. We love Why each you other. Why know babe. how we do, boo boo? We love each other. Um, and I remember having a conversation and I had tears in my eyes and I said, honey, I'm sorry. Because we got married in August and then we started the Grace Church, Church in, September. In, sep in September. There was no honeymoon. There was no newlywed season. We just took a bunch of responsibility. On top of that, getting married, we had, we had uh, three kids living at home with us. I was a stepfather at the time to three kids, and two of them were teenage twins. And you know kids don't like stepfathers. Oh, my God. Lord <laughs> have mercy. At first it was lovely. Yeah, at first it was lovely. And then all of a sudden it was like. But then, yeah, you know, so. And so all of this just kind of came all at the same time. Financially, the church was just breaking me. I mean, it was just eat, and so because we weren't in it for the money. <laughs> oh, oh no, hell no! We, we were not in it for the money at all. I know people think like you have a ministry and y'all passing around the collection plate, which we didn't pass around, by the way. No, we didn't. But so they think all this money is just coming in, right. and they probably think every time she got a new outfit. No, we have jobs. Right. <laughs> we have full time jobs. Right, right. So right, yes, right, right. you you sacrificed a lot of your own. Per I did as well because we're a union. Right. Right. Because it looks like it doesn't cost much, but that was yeah, that was a big responsibility. It does. It so anyway, she made me this. She made me this f phenomenal dinner, and I apologize because as a man, there's nothing freaking greater than my wife. Nothing. Don't so start crying. There's nothing. You know. A lot, you know, as men, and, 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 and so I'm, I'm, I'm saying this as a man, because a lot of times as men, all we want to do is provide. And on my side of the fence, you know, I say this all the time, I'm a dreamer, so I don't just want to provide. I want to dominate. I want my wife, my, 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 my life with my wife, or my wife's life with me, I want her to wake up in the morning and just be the little spoiled girl that God created Which her to I be. <laughs> That's like, I don't want just, oh, live on, oh, and we're married, it's cute. That's yeah, exactly. not what I wanted. I, you know, I want her to wake up every morning with purpose. And so all this was just falling through my fingertips and the, the car payments were behind, the rent was behind. The and, rent wasn't behind, honey. Well, we, babe, late, you talking about, babe? Late, yeah, okay. okay. The rent, I'm sorry, oh, it was late. I. <laughs> okay, no, we always pay. I mean, we pay our bills, but the stress of that. And so I apologized that night. And, excuse me, I made a decision to... Even though it didn't bother me the way it bothered you. But... It affected me because so you then, were stressed out. Okay, well then, but, but, <laughs> but that's my point. It's like when I know that's happening, now I need to make some decisions. And honestly, at the end and of And you the, did make the right decision. You did. You did. You really did. I hope so. Because ever since then, mm -hmm. we've grown in our personal lives, our financial lives. Right, absolutely. We've grown, we've made significant progress. Right, right. So obviously, it was absolutely. the right decision. Everything happens for so, a reason. I wanna go back to that time too, cause I, and then I wanna talk about what you just said. Mm -hmm. I wanna go back to that time because there were times my wife will come home and I'm sitting in the dark just watching negative TV all day. And I'm very sensitive to any, anything that's not uplifting. I'm very sensitive. Mm -hmm. How'd you feel? So, go ahead. Um, it was it was hard because like, and, and I was complaining about everything. Cause I just feel everything. I know what I carry with me all the time is mm -hmm. that I know I'm very blessed. So to walk into that and it's my husband and mm -hmm. I can't stop it and I can't just. Snap mm -hmm. my fingers and change it, mm -hmm. and it was happening often. And this went that on was, for months. That was very hard. This went on that for was months. very hard. So there were some days um, where I handle it pretty well, mm -hmm. and there were also some days where literally I'm just like, "Yeah, he's he, again. Here we go again." This Negro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I felt like I felt like yeah, you dude, knew better. Dude, I felt like you knew better. And I did. I felt and like. I did. And, but, but, but see, and that's what I want to talk about because, see, when it comes to men and depression, yeah, we know better. But when that stuff is uh, impacting us and affecting us in here, we just feel like we, we're in this dark, 
cloud. It's like God, it's like when Jesus was on the cross and he was like, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Well, that's how, that's how it feels to a man. When, when a man struggles with providing, listen, he is providing for you, but trust me, the men who I'm talking about, we have this vision in our mind of what, how we want to provide. I know that. And so when we fall short of that, it just throws the cloud. And so I'm like, you know, I felt like I was a, I felt like you were married to a loser. I felt like I was a loser. Even though I didn't feel that way. I know you didn't, but that's no, how no, I No, no, I'm just talking to okay, everybody. Okay. No, absolutely. That, because I, I think it's important for people to see that these, these things do happen. They oh, really absolutely. do happen. He can feel, he felt that way mm -hmm. inside. I didn't feel that way about him. Right. I right. didn't see you that way. Right. No, you Because you would think, you never if, if you didn't hear my side, you would think, well, if, he, if all that's going on and he's feeling like that, I'm sure his wife is looking at him like, this loser. Not at all. I never did. Right. right. I never, ever did. Right. I ever. felt, and no, you didn't. Mm. You never did. I, I, I felt confused. Um, I wanted to sell everything. I wanted to get in the car and just drive and never turn around. Um, and then it was a situation that happened um, where I wind up. I kept applying for jobs after that one job fell through, and so this one job called me, and they offered me a, a different job. Called me and offered me a position. I didn't like it. I didn't like the hours. It was split shifts. It wasn't what I, it, I didn't want to be. My thing is, I got married, and my whole life I've always worked like a madman. At this point in my life. I want to be in the bed with my wife at a reasonable time. I don't want to be coming home. And you were not willing to compromise. And I wasn't willing that. to. Yeah, I to, wasn't willing to, to sacrifice that. Actually. I wasn't. No, I, right. I didn't want to sacrifice that. Um, the pay was so-so, but it would have at least been a change, a change. And I, if I would have taken the job, you know, it would have been better for us in some other areas. And so... I went to my wife and I told her, to look, you know, they gave me an offer. She said, are you going to take it? I said, I don't know. Um, and she was like, well, baby, I think you should. You know, you need to change, blah, blah, blah. So we went through this for about a week. Inside, even under all this depression that I was feeling, I just kept sensing, don't take that yet. Like, that's not for you. And so I went to her and I said, honey, I'm not going to take it. She looked at me like. You ain't saying like that. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> you ain't saying like that. It. Because... Um, I think I think from what I recall that by the time you said that you weren't going to, mm -hmm. you you were already annoyed that I wanted you to. Okay. True, so you didn't true, come true. off all nice like true, that. It was true, like true. I'm not taking it. I'm true. not. Like, you know, yeah. Probably more than that. Yeah. I ain't more that more than that. Sugar, honey, so um. Tea. So yeah, it was a point of contention. Yeah, some, it was some a real contention because I even though I didn't think it was a great job, mm -hmm. I in my mind. Because of the nature of that business, mm -hmm. you um, could grow in it. Yeah, I thought at it. least you I had room that. to grow, so that. there was room for for me to grow. Opportunity, Especially with, yeah. yeah, it was a possible, right? But better totally opportunity later it. on down the line. Because I know that if you get into any position, I'm like, then I'm yeah, I like you're gonna get in in time. You're going, yeah, you're gonna grow. Right, I'm a I'm I'm a, I'm a working horse. Um, so when I told her that, you're a horse, honey. I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a beast <laughs> okay. anyway. Um, so. I told her no, and I could tell she was really d disappointed. She just said, okay. It was the way you said it. It was the way I said it. And I think I was starting to feel, too, how you were feeling. Yeah. So I'm like, well, how the heck can you be that upset that you didn't get a better opportunity, and then a better opportunity comes along, what looked like it was right. better at the time, and you're not taking it. In right. my mind, it was like, okay, yeah, I was, I was pissed. You were pissed. I, I was I, pissed because I, I was like, I didn't feel like um, I couldn't see the reason. Right. So I just felt like you weren't listening to me. Right. I can see that, man. I can see that. I you were being, and I thought it was some fear too. Yeah, yeah. So she thought that, and inside I just felt un I felt uncomfortable. And so um, I shared that story to say this. So after a while, my wife eventually just stopped, and she just said, "In my in, in my opinion, you just you let go, right?" That blessed me. What should I do Romo, with anything in life? Like you can't, you can't keep fighting and fighting and fighting. Yeah, but that blessed me though, babe, because you don't want to. Because do it that. showed it. It still showed me, even in the state of mind that I was in, she was gonna trust her husband, because she knows I'm not lazy. 
I don't never ask nobody for anything. Yeah, I wasn't worried about whether or not you were going to be able, whether or not you would lose income. Right. I wasn't worried about that. Right. So whether we were going to go through that. Right. But that one action of her. She didn't badger me. She didn't keep coming at me. We had some contention over it, but after a while, she was like, she just stopped. And I really believe that. What else was I supposed to do, honey? Just harass like, you just, every single day. Look, there's some women who are gonna be like, nigga, you lazy or this or that, and they're gonna just keep coming at their man. You can't. At the end of the day, you can talk to. You can talk to. You can, well, I, you can never you tell a grown person what to do. You were working though, honey. It's I was not, working. It's not like you was home twiddling your thumbs and wouldn't take a job. But That's you, different. but you still, but you could have been the type of woman that's still like, look, this dude on the couch complaining. He already depressed. He drinking. He upset. And now he get an offer. He tell him no. You could have been that woman, and you weren't. And you weren't. That. And so, so what happened was I can't remember the exact day. <laughs> But I was annoyed though. I know you was annoyed. I was annoyed. Can I just say this? Right, like, okay, so I don't want to come off like I'm just just so amazing, even though I am in some ways. Mm -hmm. But um, because when you're annoyed over stuff, mm -hmm. you're not like as a human being under your breath is like this. Get on my dirt on nerve. And then literally what I do, I make myself start praying. Because I can't say anything negative and pray at the same time. Okay. Such as that of his shoulders. Right, right, right. <laughs> because sometimes you're gonna have some real human moments. True. You're not always gonna just go and then go to the bathroom and lord. Of course. Well, I don't do that. Never. I'm always human. Okay, but go ahead. Okay. So But anyway, that's that was the frustration that I felt that you weren't listening to. Me, okay. But that was it. I went to work that next day. Um, I still felt the same. I still felt like a loser. I remember going to work. I was by myself because I'm always early. Um, I remember going to work and I was looking out the window and I closed my eyes. And I'm like, God, I can go to counseling, but that's not my issue. My issue is that I'm being lazy. I'm being self-absorbed. And I said, God, forgive me for being self, so self-absorbed that now I'm hurting my wife. And I said, I said, God, this is what I said. I said, God, even if we lose everything, every single day, I'm going to thank you for being alive. And I called you, remember? Well, I, I, I called you and I said, and I, I said, honey, I'm sorry. I said, I don't know how it's going to work out. I'm not stressing over the car no more. Yeah. I'm not stressing over renting them. I'm, I'm done. And I was like, hallelujah, thank you, God. I said, I, I, I said, I'm done. I still had all, brothers, I still had all of the same feelings. I still, my mind was all over the place. I didn't make any more money at the time. But what, see, so look, so fellas, if you're fighting depression, when it's getting to a point where you want to hurt yourself or hurt other people around you, do you got to go get help. You got to go get help. You can't wait. But you didn't go anywhere and get help. You, you well, prayed. Well, no, no. Well, well, I'm going to get to that, honey. Mm -hmm. But, no, but I'm, I'm talking about to the men that may feel suicidal. Cause that's, cause I, Not only that, I but wasn't some, there. some men are physically taking it out on okay. their wives and their families. Right. And, too. And so, that's a reality. And so, okay, and so even if you're at the point where, you, where you're so depressed, now you're becoming abusive. We're, we're taping. Stop. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, this is my new phone. <laughs> because, see, I'm talking about if you're hitting your wife. See, I was being abusive to her. Me being home, being depressed all the time. You wasn't home all the time, honey. You were, you were at work, babe. Okay, well, all right. That's, I'm paraphrasing. When you right? mean when you were home. Okay, yeah, sorry. I'm mean? sorry. Good. Um, my bad. She come home. I don't want to talk. I'm in my zone. I'm just... That hurts her. And so her putting up with that over a period of time, it, it, it's a form of abuse. And so if it's to that level, brother, you got to go get help. So I didn't go get help because I wasn't, I, I knew, I knew I wasn't shaking myself. And, and, and there was one, that morning when I got to work, I said, God, I know you're not going to take this from me. I know you're not going to take this. I, I knew it. I, God, I knew God was not going to take this stress away from me. I knew what God wanted from Robert was, Remove it. I gave you all the strength to remove it yourself. So this is what I want to say. So I dealt with this. 
Um, so you literally fought what you felt every day. I'm still, I'm, uh, I'm still doing it. I'm still doing it. I just want people to know it's possible. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no. And, and I'm still doing it. And I've shared this before, but just in case anyone missed it, because I'm sure people have, um, because people got lives. <laughs> mm -hmm. But even just to give an example, mm -hmm. there, um, there were times you were upset with me, mm -hmm. or you were just doing your best to control your temper, and all of your demeanor was agitated, mm -hmm. angry, mm -hmm. and your mouth, and I mean, this is the epitome of fighting yourself, and yet what was coming out of your mouth was, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yeah, I love yeah. you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cause I, cause it's I, possible. I, because I was pissed off. I, I was mad because I still had everything still going on. But he, your priority was, I don't want to destroy my marriage in exactly. the process. Exactly. I don't want to exactly. destroy my wife's exactly. heart in the process. And, and so I know Robert. And so I know when I get upset, the best thing for me to do is shut the hell up. Like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which drives women crazy. Yeah, which but <laughs> which drives women crazy, but, honestly. So brothers, you gotta know your trigger. I see, I know my And if they need to get quiet, let them get quiet. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies, if they let listen, them get quiet. If he gotta be quiet for a while, I know it's I know it's frustrating. I get it, and it was frustrating for her, but I know my temperament. The more I start, you see how when I start talking, then my hands start moving, I get, because that's me, I'm naturally hyper. I'm the calm, cool, yeah, and collected one. She's the calm, cool, and collected one. Sometimes. She's, you know, um, so in that, in those moments, I had to get quiet. So sometimes it was like this. I'm mad, I, because if I, even if I would have just let one, one word out, it would have been like, no. It would have been, no, honey. It would have been like, no, to so I, I had to shut up, and so I went through this process for months and months and months and months and months. Nothing changed. Oh, you would say, "Shut up, Robert." Yeah, to shut up, Robert. <laughs> that day at work, just to control yourself. That day at work, brothers. I told God, if He helps me every single day, I'm gonna be grateful. If I never get another thing, can I tell y'all? As, as my beautiful wife, my queen, sits right, as we sit here today, that's what this whole conversation is about, is how we got here, morning coffee. All of the letting go, all of the fighting, all of the people we had to move away from, all of the, because, see, sometimes if you stay in a situation, you're going to keep clouding your mind with negativity and doubt. See, there's sometimes where God is like, oh, you got a big dream? Oh, you want to be big? Oh, you want to be a giant? Okay, well, then this is what it's going to take. Well, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost. And right here is where you start paying. <laughs> it's sweat. It's sweat. <laughs> and that's what it was. And every day, I woke up. Mad as hell sometimes. I put my little, um, I go on YouTube, put my music on, piano music. I said, God, thank you for today. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my kids. Kids still acting crazy. <laughs> kids still acting crazy. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you, do. nothing around us changed but my attitude. I remember I used to say that to you. I used to be like, you have a horrible the attitude. attitude. Yeah, yeah. You're ungrateful. Yep. I used to always be like, you're just yep. ungrateful. Yep. Yes, you did, babe. That's she, funny. Every day. Because literally, it was, yeah, it was your mind, your decision to change what you were thinking, how you were thinking, <laughs> that changed everything. Yep. I'm proof. You're I'm proof. proof because anybody can sit and say that about themselves. Mm -hmm. I like we would not be here if that if that process that had not had, occurred had not taken place. Yeah, I woke up every morning. I'm with morning. you every single day. God, thank you. I, w I was getting up at five five thirty in the morning early before anybody got up because I because I, I need that t alone time. God, thank you for today. If nothing changes, you, nothing my, changes. Yeah. Guess what? Today, we are 85, 90% debt free. No raises, no increases. I just got more thankful. I'm taking some steps in a great direction. Yeah. Pulling back true. from something. Mm -hmm. Instead of dishing money out for and everybody. And able to do more where we thought, how could that be possible if, we're, if we don't have more income? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, fellas, I'm not bragging. I need. I, I'm just trying to tell you, yo, I was effed up. I was effed up 
drinking all the time, negative. I didn't, I didn't want to talk to nobody, turning my phone off, wasn't on social media, didn't want to be around nobody, just want to be, yo, every, because I'm off on Mondays and Wednesdays, every day, all day, just watching horror, and, and, and yo. Remember I was like, I, like, when I came in and it was dark like that, and the stuff that you would have on the TV, I was just like. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> only, the only thing that changed was my attitude. What I, and then as my attitude began to change, God started to deal with me. It's not about, it's not about how much I was making, but it's what you do with what you're making. So we're rich as we sit here and talk to you. I ain't bragging. Not because we made more, but because God blessed what we had. And I'm saying but it all started inside of here. Thank you. It thank all God started inside of here. Every change started in inside me. And for months, nothing change and, and 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 there was no big blessing that dropped out of the sky or no we just woke up and we just took a dollar put it here took another dollar put it there okay pay this down okay pay. and then we got online and figured out some yeah, stuff looked yeah, up our credit see what we things. was doing and yeah. it's like i just became grateful and so i i wanted to share this because sometimes as men we don't talk about the things that make us depressed See, I'm 45 now, and I'm proud of it. God blessed me with a beautiful wife. Who's only 25. <laughs> 25. Happy birthday, 25. I'm Robin the Cradle. Um, and so a lot of times, stuff we, the stuff we don't talk about is that when a man is depressed, what's going to make us feel better? Because then we start cheating. Then we go to work, and the girl at work complimented us on what we were wearing, and that made us feel good because we depressed. Or we hang out with the boys more, we start smoking more, we start drinking more. And I didn't want that to be said of me. But I'm asking you, I'm sorry for being negative. And there was times I woke up and I was still negative. But I was like, Lord, forgive me. Thank you for today. There's a big difference, though, babe. It's still a big difference. Hallelujah. That's all I can say. It's a big difference. Stop. You, you know I wondered if we were going to make it. A so few talk. times. That's what I want you to I okay. did wonder. So, yeah, I didn't. There were times I really wondered if we were going to make it. Talk about it. I did wonder. I don't know where to start. <laughs> I don't know where to start. I, I, okay. You know what was, what was hard? It was hard because your heart towards me was always, um, it was, it's been great since we committed to each other, which was in 2014. And um, I always thought you you were a great person um, and it's not that I didn't see any issues mm -hmm. I still just thought you were amazing right. but um, so that's what made it that's what made it hard for me emotionally because I'm like, like I'm gonna have, have to your, let go of a great person because mm. he's damaging me mm. and I had already mm. been in a relationship that was a quote unquote marriage because it was not a real marriage. <laughs> and that was um, about tw almost 20 years of my life. Mm -hmm. 20, uh, 10 or 11 married, mm -hmm. and I guess uh, f about five prior to that. So um, when you come away from that, you know, I really got blessed. I really got healed. I didn't just leave a relationship like everything turned around for me mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. I didn't leave a relationship and the and I was just suddenly a new person mm -hmm. I mean the same woman in new circumstances mm -hmm. everything got turned around and healed for me so the thought of suddenly being in that type of situation again because of the way you um because of your temper mm -hmm. um I was like you he's, he's a great in so many ways he's such a great person but like this Robert and Jamila chapter is going to have to end right. and I'm going to feel sorry because I really love him. Right. And right. I know he really loves me. I do love him. But um, God answered my prayers. God answered my prayers. Um, that's all, all it, I'm going to say, it, babe. You, you know. Yeah, I did wonder. I definitely wonder if he was going to make it because you would. You, yeah. I was bad. Yeah. Fellas. You were. <laughs> listen, fellas, fellas. But I always tell you as working we get, on it. Huh? As I, when, I, as you, when you started working on it, mm -hmm. that's the thing that I was, I, was, um, 
Of course, I trusted God. I talked to God a lot mm -hmm. about that, about mm -hmm. everything else too, but specifically about that often and about you. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like, I'm just telling on my husband, mm -hmm. like my heart was for you. So I'm like, God help him. God help him. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I pray for your confidence and all those things. So um, I lost my train of thought now. So I saw you working on it. I saw you working on it. I know what it is to be with a person and they're hurting mm -hmm. you and hurting you and hurting you mm -hmm. and they're just saying sorry, sorry, sorry and still hurting you and saying sorry right. and still hurting you and saying sorry and they're still doing the same thing. Right, 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 right. And from you, and this is why, like, I don't want women, don't, don't stay with a man just because he's saying sorry. You need to see that he's sorry. Mm -hmm. And if he's really sorry, he's going to make changes. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're just being played. I'm sorry. Like, no, no, no. no <laughs> you know, because for anybody, it's because, it's because it's what happens is talk. women tend to get, tend to be very soft hearted mm -hmm. for the most part. And so we see a man saying, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And we kind of melt inside. But you need to see more than him saying, I'm sorry, you need to look for him showing mm -hmm. that he's sorry. And if he's really sorry, his actions will change. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, the, and, and, and that's what it came down to. Um, you know, men, we don't like to share our emotions a lot of times. And so I wanted to talk about this because as a man, when you start getting older and you feel less than and you feel like life is passing you by and your dreams are slipping through your hands and you can't, um, you know, you, you, you know, it's like you still can't make ends meet. You can't make the right, you know, it, there's a bunch of things that happen psychological. And I think women need to be sensitive to that, too. Yeah, I mean, when we start losing our hair, you know. <laughs> I mean, I got muscles, so I ain't really worried about all that kind of stuff. But we start losing our hair too, babe. <laughs> I had twice as much hair when I was little. Oh, God, you still got a lot of hair. I did. Thank God I have a big head, so it still looks like <laughs> I got a lot of hair. That's life. It is life. We all but start changing. I know, but you know. And I think we sometimes... depend on men, on you so much as our partners. So I was saying that as women, as some uh, we need to be we should we should be sensitive. To Absolutely, that. you have to. And please, you have to. like I, I want to when well, I say stuff like that, like somebody's gonna say, well, men should be sensitive too. Of course, yeah, yes, of, we should. Of course, Ex that goes without saying. Exactly. So let me just finish my point. Good, 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 good. Okay, so I don't know. For example, mm -hmm. I don't know what it is to be a step parent in the home with technically somebody else's kids. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that's like. It was hard. It's, in it's my hard. mind, it's hard. maybe I. Maybe I do have a better temperament for that circum for the, right. that circumstance, right? right? But I don't even know, honestly, right. because it wasn't me. Right. So things like that, I think we just depend. Like you've always been so loving and so affectionate to me that my mind went there sometimes mm -hmm. instead of what you're going through. Mm -hmm. There were times it was just. I want my affection and I want my love and he's withholding it from me. That's how I felt. Right, I right. wasn't saying it. That's how it felt. So I was more focused on how I feel. And I think we do that. I think as human beings, we have to make a conscious effort to think about your partner's perspective. I agree. Because it's very easy. It's hard. It was It's hard. very easy to just start thinking about how you feel. Yo, to, but to, to, all, to, to all the men that got married or remarried and you have stepkids and even women, and even women, it is one of the most challenging things you are ever going to have to deal with in your life. To all, of, to, to all of the men and to all of the women that ever had to, uh, whoever got remarried and you were dealing with stepkids, it is one of the most challenging, especially when, see, in our situation, they were t teenagers, especially when they start to challenge your authority. And they do that to their own parents. Because they already, <laughs> so. and they already know they already know that you're limited in your in your powers, you know, because you can't hear them, you can't do this. See, my kids, I knock them upside the head. Hey, honey, I had a point before you start talking about sorry, knocking kids upside the go head. Ahead, go ahead, go ahead, babe. Lord have mercy, which I don't condone, by the way. You don't have to knock your kids. Anyway, ahead, your kids are grown, so nobody's getting knocked upside the head. Um, my point was, I think we look at men, mm -hmm. our male partners, our husbands, mm -hmm. as being, the um, yes. And we sometimes we have to be mindful. Yes, he's a man, and for some reason, and men are men are taught mm -hmm. in this world mm -hmm. to kind of hide your feelings. I'm going to talk about your feelings because it's weak. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, all of that plays into mm -hmm. how we treat you. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. We don't think anything's bothering you because you're busy acting like nothing's bothering you. There you go. And we have to pay attention enough to, to, to realize, yeah, my husband's acting like he's fine, but he's not fine right now. And if all you can do is go pray, go pray. Mm -hmm. If all you can and do is, love. there were times he, you were so upset. And I remember, like, the, I knew I couldn't say anything in that moment, but I might just walk over <laughs> and just kiss you on your forehead mm -hmm. or, or just put my arms around you. <laughs> It's, that, it's sometimes you were upset and listen, your body was like this. Sometimes we don't, as we, sometimes I didn't want her to say a word, but it was those actions that kept saying, Robert, get your shit together. Robert, get your shit together. Robert, get up from there. Get up, boy. Get up. Get up. No, but I'm saying it was those things. And she never stopped making love to me. I'm serious. I know you are. Because, see, that's funny. I already decided this is my husband for the rest of my life. But and I knew how I wanted to treat you. And, and I knew I didn't want to hurt you. There's, there's women who withhold because they want to punish because they feel like he ain't doing. Listen, fellas, you need to share this video over and over and over again because you hear a woman giving you a shout out saying sometimes men are going through some stuff. See, the world is very hard. So when so I have to say thank you because when you start Because that makes some women you're an enemy now to some women. I know. Well, as a woman, not you, honey. As a woman you, I know, I know. by me saying that. I know. I'm a strong woman. I've always been uh, there were some times in my life where I had to I had to be very independent. Mm -hmm. I'm probably very independent by nature too. Mm -hmm. But um so and somebody, um, somebody, one of my friends on Facebook or, or Instagram, somebody I'm following or who's following me, posted something like this, this the other day too. Like women have gone so far to the left with mm -hmm. this, I'm so strong thing. Well, yeah, I'm strong, mm -hmm. but I'm a strong woman. Mm -hmm. So being strong and wanting my husband is not, they're not in contra, they don't contradict each, each other. Oh, hell no. <laughs> I'm still a woman. Right, right, right. I'm still a human being. Right, right. absolutely. Yeah, I enjoy this bond. I'm not. And that, if, if that makes me, that doesn't make me weak. You're not weak at all. That doesn't make me weak, no one like, bit. Because but what you were saying, to go back to your point, mm -hmm. okay, so when we got married, both of us were already over 40, mm -hmm. um, even though I just turned 25. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're both over 40, mm -hmm. and I decided, like, this is my husband for the rest of my life. I would not have said yes to you if I wasn't sure mm -hmm. that we really do have a bright future together. Mm -hmm. Because I actually was in a relationship even right before mm -hmm. you, and, you know, he was very gung-ho. We get married, you the one, you're my wife, and we were real, real, real cool. But at some point I knew, put the brakes on, this is not my husband for the rest of my life. And so, um, because... I value you, what we have. I don't right. want to hurt you. Right. I've been hurt before. I know that that's, that's something that you, it's just not, it's not acceptable. In a committed relationship where you love your partner, mm -hmm. you don't want to cause, look, by the time you're 40 years old, you've already experienced a lot of emotional oh, damage, emotional yeah. junk and baggage. Yeah. So I didn't want to add any more yeah. to your life. Thank you. I you know, that. as much as possible, because I'm still human, <laughs> but the things that I can help, I love, like, I love my husband. So you can either hold on to the anger or you can say to yourself, I love my husband. I love my husband. That's it. And I want you to show me that type of love. So Absolutely. I have to give you that type of love. And to all, and to all the women watching. It's not one way because I know the other side of the story is it's not. You Otherwise know, women I are always doing that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But but there's not one way at all but at shout all. out to my brothers because men do it too mm -hmm. men do it too i show her love we're talking about withholding sex right 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 you know <laughs> we're but talking I'm, about still making love to each other even when despite you're upset because because <laughs> even when the kids was going crazy yo there was a couple of there was a couple of situations she said to me she was like i don't know if i could. she's she said you sure you're not gonna leave i'm like i was like i said honey i love you I love. I said I love you. I'm good. There was nothing else to say, because it was either say that or get your bags and go. Because you, you know, at times you feel like you want to just. Uh, but what you gonna do? I married her. All right. So, brothers, all I'm saying is, if that's you, love your wife, 
Love your kids. The only thing that changed was that, was my attitude. Was my attitude. And so a lot of times, we're making ourselves more upset, more depressed by focusing on all of the bad things that are going on as, instead of all of the positive things. As we sit here today, it's almost like it's a 360. Not, not physical things, but in here. That's what I'm talking about, in here. Don't let the world rob you, and don't let life rob you from spending time with your spouse. From enjoying your life. And enjoying, enjoying your, life. your life. Listen, sometimes we may not have had the money to go to Jamaica or, or fly across, but we can go to the park. And I made sure the park was special. Maybe, may, maybe it was raining. We, we got tan before we went to on vacation, babe, because we kept we going to the so park. Yeah. <laughs> we made, we, 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 we have learned in learning to make life a vacation. Make life a vacation. But don't sit there and stay depressed, brothers. The more thankful there I became, the more God started to open up my mind. And so this morning coffee is this is our life this is our vehicle to speak to the world this is our mission our passion to speak to couples every single week to say look yeah it may be rough put it aside go in a bedroom make love go on dates be an everyday power couple don't don't disconnect from don't each disconnect other. from don't each other that. because no matter what that's all it is is that the world tries to pull you apart so you can disconnect it ain't nothing out there yo listen hope y'all like this morning coffee I'm proud of you thank you babe I'm very proud of you for talking about things that um not popular yeah listen check us out on Facebook Power Couple Movement. Check us out on Instagram, I am Robert Ballot. It's for sharing your own personal struggles, not talking about things that are unpopular. For sharing your own well, thank you, babe. personal thank struggles. You. I'm very proud of you. Thank but you. yes, I am Jamila Ballot. On Instagram, um, on YouTube, we are the Ballots. Google us the Ballots. Um, check us out. If you love this pod blog, podcast, whatever you want to call it, please share it with somebody. Fellas, listen, if you need to talk, inbox me. Reach out to me. Fellas, not ladies. Ladies, reach out to her, not me. Yeah, don't get cut. Don't <laughs> <laughs> Fellas, listen, but if you need a sounding board, look, your brother's here. We love you guys. Follow us. Share our videos. Like everything we do. And don't just live. Dominate. I'm Robert Ballot. I'm still Jamila Ballot. And we are the, ballot. the Ballots. We love y'all. Peace. <sighs> Wait, take me to <laughs>